Good morning, family, and welcome to another e-virtual worship experience of the Elm Grove and New Canaan Baptist Church families. We're so glad that you've joined us, and we've got a wonderful service outlined for you today. Now, you know how we do it. We're all about making divine connections, but we can't do that unless we're connected to you. So if it's your first time watching, or if you want to know more about what's happening at Elm Grove or New Canaan, drop the word connect in the comment section so we can connect with you. And we're all about getting social, right? So if you're on Facebook, I need you to stop right now. Do a favor for me. Click the like button and click the share button and go ahead and start a watch party with your friends so that everybody on your friends list can catch this awesome service as well. And if you're on YouTube, go ahead, I'm gonna wait too for you. Click the thumbs up button. And if there's a big red subscribe button to the right, what are you waiting on? Click the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel. And if you are subscribed, Go ahead and click that silver bell to the right so that you can be among the first to know when we post new content. We're so glad that you joined us today. Now, let's get into the worship experience. Hey, what's up, family? And welcome to this morning's edition of our e-worship experience. I promise you, you have tuned in at the right time and you're going to get a relevant word and powerful praise and worship. It is our prayer that something is said or done that will be a blessing to your life. Now, share with somebody else that we are on the air and we are ready to have you magnify the Lord with us. So now listen, if you're on YouTube, please, Hit the share button. If you're on Facebook, please start a watch party. Hit the share button. Let somebody know that we are on this morning. If you have to go and shake somebody out of the bed, if you need to text someone, give somebody a call, this is the time that we gather to worship and to praise together. Come on and fellowship with us. Come on, the song says, I will bless the Lord. If you know this song, join it with us and sing it. Come on, sing. I beg that pop of the Lord with me. I beg the Lord with me. Whom the Son He hath redeemed. Whom the Son He hath redeemed. Clap your hands, rejoice and sing. Clap your hands, rejoice and sing. Come, cause you're the Lord of everything. You are Lord of everything. Come on, y'all say, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Come on, say, bless the Lord.
Because you can testify the goodness of the Lord. You ought to lift your hands and open your mouth and bless him. And bless him. He's worthy. And now, family and friends, it is time to bless the Lord with a portion of that with which we have been blessed. It is time for the giving experience. And we thank God for all of you who, has, who have been sowing into the ministry thus far. We thank God that you see enough of the work of ministry that you want to support. Please know that all that you give goes to help people in their daily lives. It helps us to spread the gospel. It helps us to uh, strengthen our young people and to reach those that ordinarily would be overlooked. And so thank God for all of you Please follow the prompts on the screen and please follow the instructions that you already know. Please know that God honors your faithfulness and the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Oh, you deserve 
We thank God for the blessing of our music ministry, ministering so beautifully this morning. And I want to thank God for another opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk. I thank my big brother Jesus for giving me a story to tell. And I thank the family and friends of Elm Grove and New Canaan for receiving me this morning. There is a word from the Lord and it is found in the gospel according to Luke chapter number five. And we shall read verses 12 through 15. Again, we are in the gospel according to Luke chapter number five. And we will read verses uh, 12 through 15. When you get there, you will find these words. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city. Behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning, I want to continue on this journey that we have taken, talking about when enough is enough. This is what I know for sure. When enough is enough, you've got to know what you're about. Uh, my students used to use this phrase, uh, I'm about that life. Well, that's what we're titling this this morning, about that life. When enough is enough, you've got to be about that life. 
What life? We are continuing this journey with Jesus. We are learning how to become uh, effective disciples. When something is effective, it means literally that it produces the desired result most of the time. It produces the intended result repeatedly. And so as disciples, we are then followers. We are learners. We are students. Our teacher is Jesus Christ. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He sent me to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This was Jesus's mission, following Jesus then. Discipleship, we understand, is not an easy task. It's not a one-time thing. It is absolutely a lifestyle. And so just as Jesus issued this second invitation to his disciples to come and follow, well, so are we. In this text, Jesus is still in the classroom mode, absolutely the master teacher. He is allowing the disciples to see what he does, how he does it, and he is teaching them so that they will understand why he does what he does. This all reminds me of the Great Commission. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, Whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. The message reads like this. Go out and train everyone you meet, far and near, in this way of life. I tell you, we're talking about me and about that life. Marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all the days, perpetually, uniformly, and on every uh, occasion to the very close and consummation of the age. Amen. So let it be. As a teacher, I, I see this. Jesus is teaching his disciples with the end in mind. This is what great teachers do. This is what excellent teachers do. They know what the desired outcome is. So then every step towards that desired outcome is designed to make the student successful, to help them understand each step in the task, such that by the time the end is near, the outcome is almost certainly already determined. Jesus knows that his final task for them and us would be to go teach everybody you meet how to live a Christ-filled life. And he knew we would meet some folk. Jesus knew uh, that we would need to know how to handle ourselves with these folk. So he takes his disciples with him as he demonstrates the expectation for their service. Now, the last time I spoke with you, we learned that as the dis disciples had caught nothing after fishing all night and, and they were professional fishermen, uh, that sometimes you will fail. Uh, you will try all your knowledge knows to do. You will try all your experience tells you to do. You will do all your friends and your family and other folk who are supposed to be in the know tell you to do, but you will fail sometimes. Jesus tells them in our uh, Luke 5 passage from, from that time, don't let your failure be final. Try again. Go back out there again. And, and I know it doesn't make sense to you. And I know that you are tired and I know that you are ready to give up, but go back again. He tells them, and this time when you go back, try it my way. Then you're working in the deep. 
then you are swimming in deep waters where you can only depend on him. Psalm 107 reminds us that God shows his power when we are in the deep. So we had to learn that there will be failure along the way, but try again and trust him. They continue on then this journey. It is Simon, James, John, Andrew, and Jesus. They next come to, according to verse 12, a certain city. The name of the city or village, according to another translation, is not important. What is important about that is it leaves room for you to put the name of your city there. So you could be coming to Baton Rouge or you could be going to a Ferguson or you could be going to any other city where the power and presence of God is needed. But when they come to this city, according to our text, and Jesus is approached by this man who is obviously stricken with a disease of a leprosy. Uh, I guess leprosy could be considered like the coronavirus today, um, especially when it first became recognized. Um, we, we are still searching for a cure. We're still uh, figuring out what it is that, that needs to be done. We're still trying to uh, develop um, a vaccination to this virus that still does things that we do not understand. Still trying to make sure we have enough ventilators in ICUs and, and bed spaces in hospitals. Uh, and, and so people um, were initially dying at an alarming rate because of this virus. Well, that's, that's the way that it was with leprosy. People were dying at an alarming rate from this disease. And leprosy was not a pretty disease. It was a disease in which your nervous system and your skin structure all broke down. Uh, you couldn't feel in your legs and arms. And many times people with, uh, with leprosy would uh, literally walk their foot off because they couldn't feel to know that their foot was cut or broken or whatever. It, it was a disease where your skin would break out all over with boils and, and oozing pus and the rest of your skin would dry up scaly, uh, turn white and ashy. It was absolutely a horrible disease. The culture of the day believed that you got leprosy because you had sinned. There must be sin in you. It's your fault that you got it. So if you had leprosy, you had to be careful. Many times people suffering with leprosy would come out only at night or they would come out in the heat of the day when there were only a few people around. And they had to always cover themselves up when they were walking near a crowd. They had to yell unclean, unclean, and then they would wait. And then after you yelled unclean, the people would open up like the Red Sea and let you pass by because no one could get closer than five feet to them. So if you had leprosy, you, you would announce yourself, your disease, and people would intentionally get out of your way because of your disease. Now this man with leprosy, that most dreaded disease, heard Jesus was coming and so he timed himself. He got the rhythm of Jesus's voice. He, he caught up with the pace of Jesus. And at the right time, he ran to Jesus and he fell at the feet of Jesus. And then he said to Jesus, Master, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Another version says, if you will, you can make me whole. Somebody missed that. The man with leprosy, whom everybody else has ostracized, tells Jesus, I know you can. Now, what I don't know is whether you will do what you can for somebody like me. Um, I, I, I know about you, Lord. I've, I've heard about you. 
I know that you can. What I don't know is whether you would move in the life of somebody like me. What does that mean? Somebody like me. Somebody who has been struck by an issue that I cannot control. Somebody who has been cut off from everybody I know because of this issue that I cannot do anything about. Somebody who has been cast off as no count by the rest of the world. Somebody who has the issue that nobody else seems to be able to do anything about. Somebody who is so lonely because of this issue, so frustrated by this issue, so angry about what's going on and nobody can cares about. Will you help somebody like me? Have you ever had a season of your life when, when you felt like God would do it for anybody else, but he won't do it for you because you don't deserve it? Because you don't measure up? Because they said that you don't matter? Because they left you for dead anyway? Have you ever felt so far away from God that you knew that he could, you just weren't sure that he would do it for you? Jesus says, I will. Verse 13 reads that, that Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. He told the man to be clean, to be cleansed or be whole. The emphasis or key here is not just that he got healed. Remember now that the disciples are following him and Jesus is teaching them about everything that he does. And he doesn't just heal the man. He teaches the disciples also. Remember I told you that this man's skin was oozing with pus and open boils and, and Jesus defies the law to be in close proximity to this man. I got to tell you, that's good news. When, when everybody else refused to, Jesus said, I will. When, when everything else failed to make this man's issue better, Jesus said, I will. When the law kept him out and the church put him out, Jesus said, I will. When, when the man's own self-esteem kept him in the back, hiding in the shadows, Jesus said, I will. Isn't it good to know that he will? Jesus' healing of the man shows his divine power. Jesus' touching of the man shows his human compassion. It is Jesus' compassion that led him to touch him. Remember, Jesus is teaching the disciples a lesson as much as he is healing this man and making him whole again. Why does he have to make him whole? Because issues do much more damage than the physical eye can see. Some of us, for example, who have been deemed socioeconomically impoverished or racial minority or underachieving or lazy or any other negative stereotypical typecast in somebody else's narrative of this life may not even see this because the truth of the matter is when I hear it enough, welfare queen, thug, good for nothing. When, when I hear it enough, calculus is too hard for you, just take business math. When I, when I hear it enough, just get a high school diploma, that's, that's good enough. When I hear it enough, go through the back door because you're not really worthy to go through the front door. I, I begin to internalize and believe it. And, and Proverbs 23, 23 and 7 says that, so as a man thinketh, so is he. And Brother Carter G. Woodson put it like this, if you make a man think that he is justly an outcast, you do not have to order him to the back door he will go without being told and if there is no back door his very nature will demand one if you are a true disciple of Jesus you've got to learn to be willing to touch the untouchables people will come across your life 
whom other people will look down on and make fun of and make jokes about and shy away from and stay away from and ostracize and criticize. But as disciples following this Jesus, you will be faced with a decision and the challenge of touching the untouchables. I know I'm right about that. Remember, the untouchable condition may not be a physical disease. Untouchable conditions come in many forms. Sometimes this society throws away people because of too much melanin in their skin. Sometimes people get locked out of society because they don't have money. Sometimes people get ostracized because they don't wear the right clothes or use the right words or have the right stuff. Sometimes people get blocked out because of where they've been. They've paid their debt to society, but society throws up roadblocks to reentry. We've got to be ready to minister to the needs of the untouchables in our society. Here's the flip side. I don't care who you are. Sometimes you will feel like the untouchable. Sometimes you will go through some things. Sometimes life will bring some circumstances your way that will make you feel like you are untouchable. You know those moments you've had by yourself well, you think to yourself, I let this fool break my heart so many times. There is no way that God is going to get me out of this foolishness again. You made yourself untouchable. Lord, I've complained about this so much. I know you're tired of hearing me on this situation. Untouchable. I can't believe that I did that to my brother. I can't believe I did that to my sister. I can't believe I did that to my mama. I can't believe that I did that to my, my friend. I, I, I can't believe that I wronged that child that way. There's no way they will forgive me. And I know that God won't either. Untouchable. But just remember that Jesus will touch you. The challenge is, as his disciple, we must touch somebody else. And so I challenge you yet again to be about that life. Be ready to, to touch the untouchables. I challenge you, as Micah said, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk where God walked. Because sometimes, it's behind some gates that man has constructed to block some away from all of the resources that everybody else has for circumstances that are beyond their control. We've got to decide that enough is enough. I'm about that life. Jesus touched the untouchable and so can I. He who hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church. God bless you. So if you have heard the word this morning and the Lord is speaking to you, we invite you to write relationship with him and fellowship with us. Use the information on the screen to contact someone. Let them know that I want this relationship with Jesus. I want to be on the right road with him. I want to give my life to him. Uh, we promise you the Lord is waiting with open and loving arms. You may ask, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. And thou shalt be saved reach out to us. We are praying for you even now. Let us know how the Lord has changed your life, how he has spoken to you through his words. We, we look forward to hearing from you. And now let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We thank you for giving us a model to go out into all the world, and to spread your good news 
We thank you, God, for giving us the courage and the strength to fight those battles that need to be fought, for giving us the voice to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for empowering us to do what needs to be done to make sure that justice is done. We thank you for moving in our lives. We thank you for having mercy upon us. We thank you for healing us. Uh, we thank you for delivering us. We thank you, God, for declaring for us that we are already victorious through you. Now, Lord, just teach us to act like it and walk like it and look like it. Thank you, Lord God, for showing us what it looks like to be about that life. Enough is enough. We want your will to be done on earth as it already is in heaven. And so Lord, we ask you to simply continue to speak to your people. Have your way in Jesus' name. And now let us look to the Lord for the, begin for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord to make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lean in your direction and may he give you peace and joy and love and good health in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you until we meet again. What a powerful word for such a time as this. I hope that word was a blessing to you and your family as it was to me. Now, before we let you go, we want to pray for you and we want to hear those praise reports. So contact us by following the prompts on the screen. And be sure to like our page on Facebook and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to help us reach 1,000 subscribers. Also, if it's your first time watching or if you want to know more about what's happening at Elm Grove or New Canaan, drop the word connect in the comment section so we can connect with you. Lastly, don't forget to give and sow into the ministry by following the prompts on the screen and help us continue to work on making divine connections. We love you and thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful week, family.